Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Bobby Pominville and I'm your reporter on the arts. Today I have a very interesting art segment to show you and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's about a subject that I've never had on my show before. So I want to introduce you to the artist, John Durham. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you. I saw your art for work before I met you and I had a little idea in the back of my mind that I was going to have you on this show. So I want to introduce you to John. He has his undergraduate education degree um, in industrial arts with a coaching minor. He has a master's degree in risk management. He's past vice president of several downtown Minneapolis insurance brokerage companies. You previously owned your own business consulting company for 10 years. You currently are a real estate broker for over 15 years in both Wisconsin and Minnesota and owner of Durham Executive Group with Remax Results. You work with your wife, who I know, in real estate, who also is licensed in both Wisconsin and Minnesota. This is quite a resume. You are the founder and president of Boomers and Seniors Expos, where you bring communities and businesses together to benefit the elderly. That is very commendable. We are, and you are, and your wife are trade show event coordinators in both Wisconsin and Minnesota. And you are a fused glass artist, and that's what we're gonna talk about today but what a wonderful way to round out your resume with, with this being a glass artist. I've always been fascinated by people who can do these kind of things. And so therefore, I have a lot of questions to ask you, John. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I have an, admired your decorative glass works because you have donated mm -hmm. so graciously to Women's Club, which I belong to. And I'd like to find out how you became an artist first. You know, that's, that's a really good question because as I kind of reflect back on my, both sides of my family, nobody is an artist of any kind uh, on either side of the family. So it made me think a little bit about that um, as I was coming over here today. And I was thinking that probably what happened was that my, my childhood was kind of a tough childhood growing up. Um, in that uh, we, we lived in poverty and stuff like that. And we had 10, ten children all under one roof that uh, uh, kind of merged families. And I, I took it upon myself to replace the roof on the house. And I took it upon myself to replace the, um, the uh, chimney, you know, and to put insulation in the walls and do things on the house to try to make it more habitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so this was during high school, and as I was doing these things, I realized I enjoyed working with my hands, and mm -hmm. I got some satisfaction because you have tangible results when you're done with it. So um, when I was in high school, I also went and did a two-year building trades degree at the same time, which will help me learn and try to uh, improve the quality of the house. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of led me to uh, the Uni University of Wisconsin Stout where my undergraduate degree was in industrial arts. So I was gonna be a shop teacher teaching people how to work with wood and metals and plastics. And uh, at that time I was building uh, log homes. I thought it was fascinating. <laughs> and so I was doing a lot of these different things and all of a sudden I encountered some stained glass. And I'm like, well, that's really cool. It's pretty. I think I would like that. <laughs> so this is over 38 years ago. Wow. And so I started self-teaching myself. That's the way I like to tend to do things, mm -hmm. whether rightly or wrongly. And I could, I could cut straight lines and snap the glass just fine. But then all of a sudden, when you had to start cutting curves and round pieces, I'm like, something's wrong here. So I I ended up going over to Eau Claire and there was one shop at that time uh, that sold stained glass work and she says to me, we have to buy a grinder. Y you know, you have to be able to like grind your pieces and round things out and that's like, oh. So anyway, uh, that changed everything. And so then I started making 
a lot of large, big stained glass windows, and some of them I still have to this day. Um, and so that kind of started the whole process off where I just enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it's, it's fun. So I've got, you know, stained glass built into my house, you know, over the front door and up down along the sides. And, and there's a lot of things that we d I've done, but eventually I started noticing that I really enjoyed working with fused glass whenever we'd go on trips, because I love art and I always go to every art store in every town that we visit on vacation. But I started really realizing I enjoyed f fused glass and blown glass. Oh, yes. And so then several years back, I decided to take a couple, actually take a couple classes in fused glass art uh, making, and uh, it was a nice start, but there's a lot that you have to learn above oh, and beyond. My. And so I got into the fused glass uh, area and, and love it. It's very common for me, uh, very, very enjoyable. So. It's, it seems very difficult to me, so it'll be interesting to hear how you did this. All right. <laughs> how long have you worked with glass? Well, it's been over 38 years now. Oh, wow. It's a long time. You, you're a pro at it then. You know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're working, is it easy to cut yourself? I mean, does that happen when you're designing these pieces? Oh, my goodness. If you're going to work with glass, you just got to get used to the idea of cutting yourself. Really? I haven't worked with glass for a few weeks because I've been busy with uh, doing some Boomers and Seniors Expos. Um, oh, yes. But um, when, I, when I get serious and I'm working with uh, glass and fused glass, and even though you, you, you learn how to handle the glass and you respect it, invariably you're going to have nicks and cuts and so it's pretty frequent that you're going to have some band-aids on your fingers and stuff as you're working. <laughs> really? So with people that I know that I'm gifting presents to, I'll often say I bled for you uh, in making oh, that. Oh, you know. <laughs> I never thought about that part of it. Yes. That it would be a little bit dangerous, in fact. Well, just minor cuts. Minor. Fortunately. But. Well, I don't know. I See, I never looked at a church window and thought how hard that would be to do it. So now I'm going to find out. So what is your inspiration for designing the glass pieces you make? We have some beautiful pieces on this table. Well, you know, um, that's really, a, 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 that's a great question because different things inspire me. And um, um, as you mentioned before, so I'm a full-time licensed real estate agent slash broker, mm -hmm. and I'm probably, I'm speculating that I'm probably the only real estate agent in the greater Twin City metro, western Wisconsin, that actually makes fused glass gifts at closing time for my, our clients. And, and I enjoy doing that, um, and my clients enjoy getting them because there's a lot of thought and personalization of the gifts for them. But, um, I, I get a little sneaky because I'll, I'll be in a house with them and they're going to be buying a house and I say, so how do you envision this house is going to look after you move in? What colors are you going to have in this room? Oh, wow. And then they'll, so you ask they'll, them they'll, that they'll, question. They'll, they'll give it up and say purple or blue or whatever. Yeah. So then I'll take that and then as I get to know them, I, I will make something specific for them that I think that they oh. might like. That is so wonderful. What a great gift. So I, the other thing is, is I really don't sell my artwork. I'm, I don't do it because I am trying to make money doing it. I do it because I, I enjoy doing it and it's relaxing for me. And I like making people happy. So for an example, one of my favorite clients uh, that my wife and I have had is she's a single mom here in Hudson and she's got four kids. And she's such a devoted mom, and she's such a great person. You get around her, and she just kind of inspires you, and just, you know, she lifts your spirit. And But every day she goes in, and she works with um, seniors um, with dementia and Alzheimer's. And, oh, I mean, she God. gives herself to everybody, you know, with their kids and, and at work. And, and so for her birthday in August, I decided I was going to surprise her. So... Um, we were, my wife and I stopped over her house briefly because she was in the process of like thinking about painting her house and she asked me a few questions mm -hmm. about the house and and 
I'll throw a little joke out here. Even though she ended up picking a color of the house that maybe I didn't like a whole lot, but during the course of it, uh, the conversation, I said, um, what's your favorite color? And she looked at me kind of strange and said purple, which had nothing to do with the color of the house. But Ooh. because of that, I went back and I made her this really pretty significant gift. Yeah. It has 44 pieces of glass in it and fuse it, did a full fuse on it and then uh, slumped it, which we'll talk about a little bit more, but it was about 30 hours of making it. And then oh, I took my. it to her, her work and caught her by surprise and, uh, and she really liked it. So that, oh. that meant a lot to me. Oh, so yeah, the other things that we do for inspiration is <clears throat> I took my two daughters and uh, their significant others in January with my wife down to the Cayman Islands and we snorkeled pretty much every day. Oh. And one day, honestly, I think I saw tens of thousands of colored fish in schools just right in front of me, just back and forth. And so when I came back, I had uh, a welder weld up a six foot by four foot um, a metal frame with wire background and then I put a plywood piece on it and I painted different uh, tones of ocean water with sand and then I made large uh, fused glass colored fish and oh. put them on it. And it's, it's really pretty and actually I'm talking to the Hudson Hospital right now mm -hmm. about maybe donating either that piece or something similar to them. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hopeful that they come back and they, they want it to be oh, part of the I hospital. Oh, I think they will. I, I think that would be so lovely up there. Well, thank you. And I also, what I do is, you mentioned, I, I um, uh, silent auctions and yes. uh, fundraisers. And yes. um, uh, I've done the um, Spirit of St. Croix Art Festival in September oh, here in Hudson. Yes. and. The proceeds are for Coco's Heart and Dog Rescue because we love dogs, and oh, so oh, that's a very and, good and one. And so we like we yes. just like doing stuff like that, and uh, that that makes me happy when I can do stuff like that. So, so were you there this past year? Not this past year, but the, one the year before, before yes. Yeah. Oh, that is such a wonderful place to be too. Oh, it's I fun. mean, I enjoy that festival a lot myself. The reason the reason we weren't able to make it is because we were putting on a large expo on Woodbury for boomers and seniors and oh yes so that's right it's a little bit of a conflict but that's now is that originally your thought yes. for yep. that group yep uh, my wife and I we really enjoy working with um, the aging population and uh, we see that there's some real needs that you oh, know yes. sometimes they're forgotten and oh, boy, uh, you're right. so to bring all kinds of businesses and services under one roof mm -hmm. Uh, uh, bringing the community together, business community together to work with uh, uh, that aging population. Uh, we yes. get a lot of uh, satisfaction. We just did the Hudson one, the second Hudson one this year, last Saturday. Oh, yeah. And so it was very enjoyable. Oh, I admire you so much for that. Well, thanks. That is really just a beautiful thought process that you went through to get to that. And I admire you for Anything to do with the elderly is something that I personally like to do, too. That's good. And, of course, it's easy with my music. I, oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, wow, those are really good answers. <laughs> now, um, let's see, what else? Can you use any type of glass when firing glass in a kiln to make a project, or does it have to be a special glass? You know, that's really one of the the most important pieces or parts of fusing glass. Uh, the glass has to be a uh, very specific glass that is for uh, firing in a kiln. And the reason why is that it's what they call a coefficient of contraction, COE. And so um, most people tend to work with either a 90 COE or 96 COE. Um, and the, and the reason is, is that they're incompatible together, and so the it won't fuse and the glass will crack. I tend to work with both of them, but it's critical that I keep the storage of them segregated and everything marked real well. But um, the, 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 the coefficient of contraction, it allows, uh, it, it allows for a certain kind of glass to expand and contract at a certain pace. And if you mix something else that's contracting and expanding it differently, the 
creates problems. So um, most, of, most of these products you see here sitting in front of us are 96 COE. Mm. Uh, but then this piece here, uh, this is neither, and this is a quarter inch thick commercial window glass Ooh. that um, that I have learned how to work with and uh, do a full fuse, and then I do a, uh, then I slump it for a second fire to end up with kind of this kind of a design for a platter. That's beautiful. But that's just commercial window glass. But I have no idea how you get those designs. Are you going to explain that later? Um, the, the designs is what I would do. Is, so it's going to be a flat piece of glass when I first start working oh, on yes. it. Oh, yes. Yes. But it's real, it's imperative that I know which side uh, is facing up because uh, you have to use a black light when you're working with uh, commercial window glass like this. And uh, you and you, you check and if there's a little bit shinier reflection that has to be facing up in order for commercial uh, window glass to work but you lay it, you lay it on a, um, a mold and uh, uh, you raise it up to uh, temperatures saying at 1450 uh, for 30 minutes and it forms um, and it fuses and then we take it back out cool it back down, anneal it, and then uh, we get another mold and it's kind of hollow underneath and we, we bring it up to about uh, 1250 to 1300 degree Fahrenheit for, and hold it for so many minutes and then it drops and it does the slump then. Really? Yep. Wow, I had no idea how you would do that. But, but that is a very attractive design. I could see a lot of people would want that particular shape because it's it's beautiful. Well, it's great for things like fruit, you know, or yes. uh, something in the kitchen. Um, we have a few of these sitting around and, yeah, or you're serving. Uh, yes. You know. Yes. Very, very unique. I That's very impressive. So, um, going on. <laughs> so for fusing glass, you must use a kiln that heats the glass up correctly. Explain the firing process and its importance. Sure. Uh, I, I happen to use a, what's called a Gen Ken kiln, and uh, I really like it. And the reason I like it is that it uses the same electrical power outlet that you use for blow hair, hair blowing your hair. Oh, it's okay. uh, 110 with a 20 amp uh, oh, breaker yeah. Yeah. and it's it's light enough of a kiln that I can pick it up and move it mm -hmm. you know um, and so it's 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 nice to work with there's not a lot of parts that break uh, when you're working with something like this mm -hmm. um, but when you get into working with glass the firing process is the most important part of the whole fused glass making. And so once you've identified what kind of glass you're going to work with is that you need to make sure you understand your kiln because every kiln fires a little bit differently and 20 degrees difference can be, you know, uh, cause failure if you're not, if you're not heating it up to where it should be and holding it when you should be a certain temperature. So. So what, what I did is I, I put together this sample firing process board and for every 50 degrees starting at uh, 1250 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, I've got the same pieces of glass uh, and this side over here, it goes from 1250 up to 1450 and, but it's being held for one minute at that temperature. So you ramp up the temperature and you hold it. And as you, as you look at it, you can start to see um, where the glass in certain uh, places are starting to liquefy a little bit and starting to uh, fuse. And so, um, and over here, we're doing the 1250, but we're actually holding for 30 minutes at the same temperatures. And you can start seeing big differences. Um, like here, we finally got a full fuse. 
when you're working with glass in the kiln, you have to have six millimeters thickness of glass. So typically you have to have two layers of glass. Otherwise it does crazy things and it doesn't work out the way you want. Mm. And so here you see a fully rounded at the 1400 for 30 minutes. Uh, and so it's nice and smooth. You got the fire polish. Um, you see major changes in what we call the glass fret over here, which is chunks of glass where the, they're, they're really 3D here sticking on mo mostly with adhesive at this point in time. Uh, and then you start seeing them melt and kind of going into the white backdrop. And then here, you can just barely feel some of the bumps here. It's sunk in so far, and the stringers you can't feel at all. But you can just see how nice and rounded. You get up here, um, and it's only 50 degrees hotter than here. We were holding this for 30 minutes. This is for one minute. And you can just see how significant that's impacting. And then, of course, over here for 30 minutes, it's just completely flush and sunken in. Right. Yeah. So putting together a uh, firing process board when you get your kiln to fully understand uh, what temperatures you should be working with, because you have, you have to create a firing process mm -hmm. uh, formula for each thing you you cook in the kiln because everything's a little bit different. So for an example, like I made this for Valentine's Day for my wife oh, um, yeah. because we have two daughters and her. So, oh, uh, so I, made, I made the hearts and uh, Ritz wrote something on the back um, uh -huh. and encased that uh, with glass. But I did a semi-fuse. Um, the first thing I did is I, I did a full fuse on these two pieces of glass here. Uh, one is clear in the back and one is white on top. I did a full fuse. And then I did a um, semi-fuse, just kind of tacking this to the, the white glass. And then the third firing, I, I used the mold and it, it dropped down and, and it slumped it. So um, I make a fair number of these, uh, not necessarily with the hearts in them, but for you know, uh, appetizers and things that people can oh, use. Oh yes, the shape is perfect. Sometimes I'll make little football fields with green and gold, you know, oh, markers, you know. Wow. If, if you're a Packer fan or something yes, like that. Yes, that would work really yeah. well. But this could be a commercial product because I can see where people would want that piece. I mean, it's very attractive. No, thank you. And so that's a semi-fused piece of glass. Uh -huh. This is also semi-fused. And so you can get really creative. Uh, so the glass isn't completely melted together. Uh, so you cut strips on this and you did a semi-fuse um, to uh, bind the glass together. Because again, there's two layers and you can actually kind of see the second layer underneath. Um, and and so it rounded the edges and stuff, but it has a really distinct, nice look as a semi-fuse. Um, I, I really like it. I think that's really a pretty piece. I do, too. It's, and I, I do believe that would be a lot harder to make than it looks. I mean, it looks like it's so difficult to get everything symmetrical. It takes a little bit of... I don't know how you could do that. Anything with fused glass work is very time-consuming. When people ask, well, how long did it take? They, they have no idea just the amount of work that goes into it, mm -hmm. which is why it's hard to sell uh, glass for, you know, at the prices people want to pay. But they don't, they don't recognize just how expensive the glass is to begin with. Oh. But then the time that goes into it, it's, it's pretty amazing. It is. And then because transporting glass can be problematic, as you can imagine, I decided to just bring a couple coasters. And these coasters here, I've made eight sets, uh, dinner sets uh, of this. So this is kind of my earthy tones. Mm -hmm. And so this is my autumn set. So I have platters. I have uh, eight sets of dishes and uh, bowls. And then I've got the coasters. So I thought it'd be easy to just bring these along. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit kind of my more fun, summery, mm -hmm. uh, fiesta kind of <laughs> um, 
um, dinner set and so yes. so we got a, we got some different ones of course uh, uh, hear about uh, no more dishes uh, in the house <laughs> Becky's got enough dishes oh uh, I bet and then um, yeah. this one here just was having some fun so uh, again the two uh, layers of glass to get the six millimeter thickness but then what I did uh, so black on the bottom white on top white allows you to really draw out the bright colors uh, and it, they just kind of pop more and so these are what you call stringers and the glass um, uh, Stringers and so you cut them and you can kind of lay them in different ways and when you when you um, fuse it um, They melt into the glass so you can you can uh, raise the temperature up to whatever temperature so you can do a partial uh, fuse or a full fuse Okay, so that's what this one is, and you can stand this on a stand, you know, if you wanted to. Oh, yes, that would be very attractive. And, and then this one here, this is an interesting one because um, there's 44 pieces of glass in this one. It's kind of like what I made for the, the single mom, oh, yeah. but hers was quite a bit bigger, and um, but it's real heavy. It's... Um, um, Basically, I cut the glass in half-inch thick strips, and oh. um, and then uh, did a full fuse, uh, binding all 44 pieces of that glass, and then um, then I slumped it. You can kind of feel how heavy that is. Oh my goodness, that yeah. is really heavy. Yeah. So is, are those lines what I'm seeing? The different pieces. Yep, those are different pieces. So yeah, you see. And how on earth did you get that? milky looking thing in the middle that's looking for a certain kind of glass that you think will uh, highlight nicely oh. so and it certainly does and then on the outs on the outside of it uh -huh. you'll see it's a little bit sparkly it's a oh, little brighter yeah. and so yeah. that's an iridescent piece of glass that oh, i put on the outside yes you don't do that on everything no but that is a very decorative piece, and that color is very attractive. I bet people love that color. Yes, and, and we just had some friends um, who just got married a month ago. They have actually just purchased Pudges, and in a month or so they'll be opened oh, up. Oh, right, new, right. They'll be open up uh, a new establishment. But yes. um, she loves this color, and uh, I actually made her one exactly like this. Oh. All of her jewelry tends to be kind of this color. Oh, and so wow. that's where kind of that personalization of a gift, you know, so. That's beautiful. Oh, that color blue is just stunning with glassware. It's just so attractive. And then these. Then you have some. Yep. I. Um, dragonflies? Yep. I make different things, dragonflies, butterflies, you know, mm -hmm. lots of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, the women seem to really like the butterflies and dragonflies, so this is a, an example of a butterfly. And what's kind of unique about this is that uh, fusible glass is so expensive, um, and actually some of the, the glass manufacturers have either gone out of business or they've moved to Mexico of uh, the last year or two. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, no matter what you do when you do fused glass or stained glass, you end up having scraps all the time. Oh, yes. Because when you cut, you know, you mm -hmm. got a lot of scrap or maybe you make a mistake and you... So what I do mm -hmm. that's different than most uh, people, I think, is that I, I, I save all my glass, but I make sure I separate by 96 COE or 90. And then what I, I've made up some... Um, Oh, some metal frames where I can stick the glass in there and I can just hammer it and break it all up. Oh. And then I've got some uh, screens that I've made at different uh, size openings. And so what I do is I okay. sift it and then I have what's called frit. And frit is going to be like, uh, you know, you can, have, you can have large chunks of frit and like this is frit and that's frit. And so you can you can separate it by colors and sizes and so when i make these things i use a mold 
and I can sit there and decorate it, kind of like Christmas cookies. You sit there and say, well, what, <laughs> what is it that I want? No yeah. calories, though, Bobby. Yeah. And oh, so, that's nice. And so uh, <laughs> you say, well, what do I want to do? Uh, and so this one's got some purple, opaque purple, uh, opaque black, uh, some clear in there, a little bit of opaque green. And, um, and so you can come up with unique ones depending on your mood and your thoughts. And I often give these away for different things, too. Oh, yes, those are very lovely. I could, I could see a, a definite place in the garden for some of these yep. things. That would be lovely. And in pots uh, with plants. And sometimes women like to hang them in windows and stuff to catch the sun. So. And, and now the part I'm not getting is how do you get the different colors? Are you choosing the colors before you do the fusion? Yes. You have to have all that laid out. Yep, you have to. So like if you're going to be doing like this here, that's the first thing is you have to uh, acquire the glass. And in, in this particular piece, you know, I don't have big pieces, but you have to buy big sheets, which are expensive. Oh, yeah. Okay, And so... Um, and so then you would uh, you would put them together. In this particular case, it's a coaster. Mm -hmm. um, you always have to clean everything with isopropyl alcohol, removing the fingerprints and everything. But uh, I lay it down on a special um, uh, sheet, that clean sheet that you, is, you're able to fire it in the kiln. Mm -hmm. And I fuse it like that, uh, and it's fully fused, so those individual pieces are now basically one. Mm -hmm. And then I will turn it over uh, and I will fuse it one more time because now this is the top side and it will do a kind of a fire polish and it's kind of a bright yeah. versus, you know, on the back side it doesn't quite look like that. Right. So whatever you're firing, on the top side looks brighter. Yeah, yeah that's very intricate. I, I wouldn't have... To thought you, that you would have that type of a thing to lay out and do the different colors and the different sizes and I it's it still kind of baffles me how you get these products to look the way they are especially that one <laughs> I just don't understand how you got to that design uh, you know it's it's a process when you start doing it you know is that at least for me, I like to start making bigger and bigger pieces. I'm not the, mm -hmm. into the jewelry pieces. I've done that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Making jewelry is very inexpensive and pretty oh, easy. Okay. Um, and you can fire so many of them at mm -hmm. one time. And I, I like to get creative with um, larger pieces. And that's kind of the direction I'm going is, is uh, wanting to keep building bigger and bigger pieces. Um, um, I think people really tend to like some of the stuff that, you know, good sized pieces. So. so you've actually got things in your home that look like stained glass windows and that type mm -hmm. of thing. Yep. But I, what I don't understand is, how, aren't you limited by the size of the kiln? You are. Um, and so it's a matter of, of saying, what's the next size kiln? that I want oh. to buy. <laughs> and so you can wow. keep going bigger. I, uh, I'd say yeah. about a month ago, I, I drove all the way up to um, uh, <laughs> Brooklyn Center. There's a, a, a lady, a nice lady, that had uh, used this huge kiln for years and years and years, and she was very talented too, and uh, wanted to sell it. But it'd take about three or four guys to lift it. Oh and uh, And it, um, but you can fire a lot of big stuff in it. Um, but I just decided I'm going to hold off for a bit. Oh, okay. Um, but that's that's where I'm heading. That's where I'll be. You're um, heading toward the larger. Yeah, yeah. Works. I, I definitely enjoy getting into bigger pieces. You know that you can do some fun stuff. Wow. So that's no, that's that's something interesting that might be happening in the future, but I still have a hard time imagining getting a piece into it and out of it. And it must be difficult to work with that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Maybe a little bit, but 
it's you know you goof up on those pieces and there's a <laughs> lot of money sitting there because glass is not cheap you know so. oh i see well see i have no idea about that part of it but the colors and everything else i just i'm impressed at how much you have here i think you already described the glass artwork so let's see how long does it take for you to make some of your projects well, like this one here, yeah. this is close to 30 hours. Oh. Um, the first thing you got to do is you have to cut 44 separate pieces of glass. And, um, and then, you know, they have to be the right lengths uh, and the right thickness. So cutting them uh, to the right lengths and uh, thickness is critical because otherwise you end up with, with them and they're too short and they show up, you know. Ooh. And so... Sometimes you have to cut a few extras just to make sure you got the right pieces. Oh. And then you start assembling it, um, but you have to clean each piece meticulously before you put it in the kiln. But you have to, have a, you have to kind of create a mold to kind of hold everything together. Uh, and you, you do a full fuse. That's probably going to take, you know, 14 hours maybe uh, to cook it and do a full fuse. And you take it out and let it cool down, and then you clean it up again, and then you put it into a slumping mold that uh, you know that allows it the whole thing so it's straight right now, mm -hmm. and then you bring it up to a, a temperature that's not as high as what you had it at uh, when you did the full fuse. Maybe you bring it up to say 1300 for mm -hmm. maybe 30 minutes. Uh, and then it, it kind of drops out the bottom and you get that slump look. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of steps in the firing process. Um, there's kind of a pre-soak as you, as, you, as you ramp up the speed. Uh, you don't want to ramp up too fast. And at a certain point, probably about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to hold it, the temperature, for a little bit, just let things stabilize a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you bring it up the rest of the way kind of a little bit more slow and you get it up to whatever it is that you might want and you hold it for so long and then you start dropping the temperature but you got to do it in a very controlled manner and you have to uh, the kneeling process is real important you have to cool you have to um, cool the glass at a certain temperature so it doesn't crack on you and uh, I typically when the glass gets down to about 900 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit I tend to hold it for about an hour just at that temperature, just letting it stabilize. Mm -hmm. Something like this, then I might, I might um, do a kneeling a couple more times, maybe at 700 degrees, I'll um, hold it for about five minutes, and then maybe down to 500, I'll hold it for a couple minutes, just to kind of make sure that you don't get it starting to crack and everything. Oh, boy. Um, something like this here, um, this might take you, mm -hmm. uh, this might take you about uh, 24 hours or so because you're going to have to cut the pieces, uh, place them, get them in place, and then you're going to have to um, do a, a semi-tack uh, fuse, and then you have to slump it for another firing. That looks difficult to me. And I, I are you f um, sort of learning all this by hit and miss, or do you have pretty much good ideas now what you're doing or when you first started could you maybe have cracked something or absolutely uh, when you first start um, you know you're really on, at least I was on my own and so yeah. you would sit there and you would come up with some of the ideas and you would um, you would start making it and every once in a while you'd be like darn it I what, what did I do wrong here, you know? And, oh, uh, yeah. and something might crack or something mm -hmm. didn't fuse right and you end up breaking it up. Oh, and like I said, yeah. how I reuse my glass, so right. I recycle it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work when I do that, but, um, oh, boy. Uh, but you kind of learn over time. And yes. that's kind of the way I learn anyway, is like I have to get my hands dirty and jump right in there. And so, um, but then after you've done it a couple times, you know, you, you can just whip these things out pretty fast. 
pretty much everything because what I do is I record and document everything, like kind of like a journal. Oh, at okay. this temperature and this temperature, and I held it this long, and I kneeled it at this temperature, and, and it's like that one worked, you know. So. So you you don't really have people placing orders or whatever. No, I You're typically. You're not that kind of an artist. No, nope, I'm not trying to sell. I, I like to gift people and do silent auctions and do things. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why we certainly have appreciated that in the Women's Club. <laughs> um, do you have any art shows coming up? You know, no art show at this point in time. I haven't decided if I'm going to do the Spirit of the St. Croix Art Festival next year or not. Oh, yeah. You have to understand when you're doing that as a fused glass artist is that you have to wrap up every single piece and you have to transport it without breaking right. down and then you set unwrap and set it all up mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you have to wrap it all up and <sighs> pack it and take it home then you come back on Sunday and you do the whole process again yeah where a lot of people depending on their you know their their wood or the metal piece of art they have they just leave it sitting out in the outside and it doesn't matter if it rains on it or whatever, oh, you know. Wow. And so it's really a lot of work. And so Yes, that oh man, I can yeah. just imagine how time consuming that is. Starting to enjoy working with people that uh from my wife's uh women's groups that have been coming over yeah. a few times and yeah. and uh they have fun having you know, making stuff uh -huh. that we show them how to do. And, oh, so and you have done some little workshops yes, for and, uh, ladies it, and different yeah. people. And they, they really seem to enjoy it. So oh, yes. it might be earrings or some kind of jewelry. Oh, or it might be, wow. It might be, you know, dragonflies and butterflies and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Because I thought you were going to say at one point that maybe you had some kind of an apprentice teaching you all of this, but you've learned it all on your own. Pretty much. I, when I started off in the fused glass, I took two classes that were just really elementary basic. Oh, okay. um, and uh, every once in a while there was a call, say, hey, you know, what do you do in this situation? But basically on my own. You just yeah. trial and error. And, uh, wow. But once you get it down, you, you, you're, you're off and running pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you have beautiful products here, and I can see where this would feed your creative side. And you, you must be so pleased when you get it to work. Oh, I do. It's, um, I, I like, as I mentioned, I learned early on in my life, I like working with my hands and it's relaxing. Um, my studio is down in my basement. And, um, you know, sometimes as a real estate agent, you know, the phone never stops ringing, mm -hmm. especially during busy season. And if I can go down there and just kind of like forget about some things once in a while and uh, find some time for myself, it's it's like one of the best things that I can do. It's just very common. Yeah. And uh, and then when you do have a nice product that you you've uh, you know art piece that comes out, um, you know it, it makes you happy, it makes you feel good. Right. So oh, that's that's a reward in itself. It is. I could see why it's it's. It's definitely something that you enjoy and you when you're creating something, even if you're just doing it through music, I mean it's so enjoyable, so relaxing just to lose yourself in what you're doing. Absolutely. Everyone needs to find something that uh, yes. helps them relax. I agree. So um, what would your contact information be and we could put it on the screen too. Oh, that'd be great. So should we? Yeah, can do that. I don't have a, uh, a fused glass uh, a website per se, but mm -hmm. our website uh, is DurhamExecutiveGroup.com. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you want to get a hold of uh, my wife, Becky, and I, mm -hmm. uh, Durham, like uh, Durham, North Carolina, ExecutiveGroup.com. Oh, yes. uh -huh. My phone number is 651 231 2191. And my email is John at DurhamExecutiveGroup.com. Well, what an interesting interview. It's, it's a first ever for me. And I have to say, I learned a lot, and I have a lot of admiration for what you do. Well, thank you. It's, it's a very lovely product. And I don't know, I had no idea that it would be so intricate. So much would go into it. But um, 
I've enjoyed this interview a lot with you, John. Well, thank you. Thanks I've for coming too. in. You bet. And I do want to thank the audience for watching today. I hope you learned a lot about this glass fusion that we talked about today and, and, uh, and possibly see some of these products in the future. And hopefully you would have enjoyed the show today. Thank you for watching.